Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, you. Give us a minute. I want to ask you one question. I want to know whether you've ever wondered how BBC programmes are brought to your screens. Have you, for instance, considered a job behind the scenes? Well, how about becoming a recording operator? BBC Television in London are always looking for new operators in their recording department. And they're people who help record, make and transmit all kinds of film and videotape programmes. Let's take, for example, a Thursday evening. Let's have a look at some of the jobs a recording operator does. When a new uh, trainee recording operator arrives in the department, they're quite frequently sent into the transmission suite. Uh, this is simply because there's a lot of tape changing goes on uh, because there's so many programmes go out in an evening that emanate from uh, the transmission suite. When he arrives, an operator will show him uh, or her the, um, the line-up of the machine, check that they know what they're doing and then essentially leave them to get on with it. Um, there's also a senior recording operator who oversees the whole affair. Uh, he's responsible for checking the various paperwork that comes with the spools with the network engineer who lives upstairs in the, in the network control room. Uh, they talk to each other over the phone and uh, check that the spool numbers match with the information they've got on their transmission schedule up there. Once he's happy, then the programme can go ahead. And make it a clear round with us on BBC One. So now, Janice Long and Simon Mayo presents this week's sounds that are top of the pops. Lead mix. Got a radio times here that tells me what programmes we've got uh, on this evening. Uh, top of the pops is followed by EastEnders, which is uh, on my tape rack here. Um, Tomorrow's World is a live programme, so we're not actually involved with that. Uh, question of Sport follows on after Tomorrow's World. Then we're into the 9 o'clock news, which again is live. That's followed by Victoria Wood as Seen on TV, which is a tape programme. And after that's Question Time. Now that's again off tape and will be transmitted from here, but we won't get the tape until shortly before the transmission time. That's followed by uh, Don't Break Your Heart and Late Night in Concert. But that's our last programme this evening, and that finishes at 10 past 12, so that's the time we'll be going home. There are 240 operational staff in television recording. This, these consists of 100 recording operators and trainees. There are about 80 senior recording operators and 80 videotape editors. In addition, there are 10 supervisors like myself. Television recording is scattered throughout the building. Uh, in the basement, there are three videotape areas. There's the two main operational areas plus an edit suite. There's the telecine areas on the first and second floor. Behind me is a ranked Intel Mark III telecine. And a telecine machine basically allows us to show material directly from a film print or even a negative. And it does this by converting the image you get from the print into an electrical signal via photoelectric cells. We use two types of film gauges, and they are 35mm film and 16mm film, and both are quite easily interchangeable on this type of telecine. Nice. When film prints come back from the laboratory, they are not always to the liking of production staff. So we, we have a method where we can alter the colour of the shots electronically using this equipment here. Yeah. Yeah, we can add red or green or take out a bit of blue or red and we do it to the satisfaction of production staff who are usually sitting beside you at the time. 
There are quite a lot of programs on film really. Take tonight for instance, on BBC2 there's a 40 minutes documentary which is entirely on film and also there's a time watch program which comes off film. There are a lot of programs which contain film clips within them as well as studio shots. Right. Have a very good show buddy, do enjoy yourselves. 30 seconds to go everyone, oh, stand by VT30. Thank you. When I go on air, I still do get pangs of anxiety, which I think most people do, just with the apprehension, will everything go smoothly and OK? I think she's doing the benches. We're on BT 30. 30. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can appreciate that when there's 10 million viewers watching Tomorrow's World, if something does go wrong with the VT machine, then it's down to the operator to perhaps solve those problems. But I remember when I first joined and with my first transmission, I was literally paranoid and sort of like struck, stricken with fear. Although Tomorrow's World is a live programme, there are actually pre-recorded items called inserts. Each VT machine runs alternately, first of all Gary and then myself. This allows time for re-queuing between each item that we have. Each machine is connected to the studio via the VT control room. This is also another recording operator's job to man the control room. Experts fear that in 50 years' time, there might be only tiny pockets remaining with alarming sociological and ecological effects. As one of several women in VT, I'm treated very well. The department is generally very friendly, and if you do need any help during the training programme, the members are always very helpful and will come to your aid. I had my first annual interview a week ago now, and this consists of a report being written on you of your progress during that year. And uh, I thought I did quite well. These are Rank Sintel Mark II 35 mm telecine machines. This is one of a pair, and there's a similar pair across the corridor. Now, these machines transmit um, probably all the feature films you have ever seen on BBC television and uh, shorter modern films such as Cagney and Lacey, Moonlighting, Dynasty, etc. At the moment, we're transferring to videotape uh, an Alfred Hitchcock film called I Confess. And this has come to us on five reels. And so we're using two machines and changing over between each reel. These machines are quite old now, but they still produce superb results and you still use them for transmissions on a daily basis. Before starting at TV Centre, I spent ten weeks at Evesham at the Wood Norton Training Centre um, on a ten week course which was an introduction to television operations. Then after that we came down to London to spend a week at South Africa Road which is around the corner from TV Centre and these were further lectures to consolidate our theory at Evesham. And then we were assigned to either the telecine or the videotape department for six months. And from then on, our training is more intensive and more on the job. So we actually get to know the nuts and bolts of what we're doing. In the first few weeks of starting here, the main problem is getting to know everyone and trying to remember everything as well. There's, there's quite a lot to remember. But I've been working here for six months now, and I feel quite confident. And uh, I've been given a certain amount of re responsibility I'm about to start in videotape, so I've got that ahead of me, so there's still quite a lot to learn. I'm recording a telecine transfer coming from TK 3032. It's an Alfred Hitchcock film. The tape's going to be physically sent to BBC Scotland because they're trans transmitting at a different time from BBC London. Earlier today, I was recording the cricket highlights that were sent over the satellite. It's the Australia's Highlights Package Programme. of the second of the one-day matches for this weekend in Brisbane. Once we've recorded the complete package, we'll stop and check and make sure we've got a complete satisfactory recording.
So if there's any bad bits, we can get them sent back over the line again. A videotape editor will take out the advert breaks, and then the program will be complete, and we can transmit it later on today. As an experienced recording operator, you get quite a wide variety of work. You also be expected to undertake a certain amount of extra responsibility, acting senior recording operator. You could be assisting an editor in an edit suite. Some days you are quite slack, and then the next day you're all hands to the pumps and everybody's working their feet off. I've been a recording operator now for three and a half years, going on four. And my next possible for progression from here would be to senior recording operator. And that's through an interview type situation that we call a board. Uh, that involves pretty stiff competition from your fellow colleagues, so it's not actually a natural progression. Uh, I actually had a board recently and I didn't pass it, so hard luck. <laughs> Recording operators generally work an average of 42 hours per week, but the television service demands their staff to work long shifts and unsociable hours. This, however, is compensated by frequent days off. The hours of work for operational staff in, in television recording are not the normal nine to five office hours. We have to cover the period from 0800 in the morning until midnight every day of the year. We get four weeks and four days of annual leave in a year but we're expected to work some bank holidays as well. So uh, we get a payment for coming in on a bank holiday. And then we also get a day off in lieu as well. Um, that adds up to nine extra days off over the length of the year. We work on a, a rotor system whereby we spend 12 weeks down in the videotape department, which is downstairs. And then we spend six weeks up here in the telecine department. And then after that, you rotate around 12 weeks in VT, etc. The only problem, really, that I have is my wife intensely dislikes me working on lates, so that when I'm on a busy week, she sees very, very little of me when I'm actually on lates. There are never any problems getting home in the evening or late at night, as the BBC provides a late night transport for anybody working past the hour of 10.45 p.m. Before commencing work at Television Centre, a new trainee has to attend a course at Wood Norton, the BBC's engineering training centre. It's set in 170 acres of woodland, overlooking the River Avon, near Evesham in Worcestershire. The grounds include lecture blocks, studio and technical areas, and a modern residential complex. This can house up to 300 students attending various courses, and is comprised of single rooms with TV lounges and coffee areas. There are many recreational facilities at Wood Norton, including snooker, squash, badminton, table tennis and a multi-gym. There's a large self-service restaurant in the grounds and a bar situated close to the accommodation. Whilst in Evesham town, two miles away, the BBC has its own clubhouse. The Introduction to Television Operations, or ITO course, is a broad-based course for all new entry operational staff um, from throughout the BBC. This includes people from the regions and who are going to be based in London. It also includes all categories of operational staff from camera operators to sound operators through to the VT operators. The course itself uh, is 10 weeks long and we work on the assumption that uh, the initial entry students have no information whatever about the operations within the BBC. So it starts at a very basic level. The entry students are of the age group of about late teens, early twenties generally, though we do get some older students. And the course itself is very operationally biased. There is very little basic technical information taught. We're much more interested in teaching the people to be able to use equipment rather than um, the great principles on how it actually works. Okay, let's try that again. The students on the course are required to carry out certain projects throughout the course. They will have to make short programs of their own using various media, um, starting with the still camera and then going on to a video camera and then on to a film camera. All of this work, they will uh, first of all design the story themselves or uh, script the story themselves and they will then edit it all down after it's been shot 
and they will then present it to um, perhaps a, a fairly critical audience of lecturers <laughs> who will um, offer, I hope, constructive criticism. Uh, in addition to that, obviously there, there is some classroom work because they have to learn um, a little bit about the equipment before we can actually start handling it. And we do, in fact, carry out a process of continuous assessment throughout the course, looking at how people perform. Um, so it's not a course that people are actually going to pass because they come to the course. <laughs> and we do, sadly, occasionally have people who fail the course. To apply for a job as a trainee recording operator, you must be at least 18 years old, with a minimum of maths, physics and English passes at O level or equivalent. The BBC, however, frequently takes on students with higher educational achievement or work experience. It's not easy to join television recording because apart from your qualifications, you must be, above all, creative, alert, sociable, able to communicate and be flexible in your approach to problems. You should be able to demonstrate a commitment to a hobby or an active interest relevant to broadcasting. This could include photography, amateur video or theatre, music recording and any similar skills with technical equipment. I think what helped me get the job as a trainee recording operator was my technical background. I spent two years at a tech college which dealt not only with electronics but also the use and operation of audio equipment. Also my hobbies included the playing of a couple of musical instruments and also I did voluntary work at a hospital radio station. I think basically everybody in television recording has a particular interest in film or television or photography, something like that. I myself was a film projectionist in our small family run business at home. Uh, I was also just fixed everything, television sets, <laughs> washing machines, <laughs> basically in interesting stuff like that. I also studied uh, electronics at the Polytech. I came from a technical background. I worked for Plessy and Electronics for about three years. And I also had an, in, an interest in recording anyway. I was keen on music recording, etc. And uh, also in photography. So I think those combined elements made me a suitable candidate for the job. As you can see, a recording operator plays a significant role in creating BBC programmes. If you want to join us or find out more, then write to this address.